Tethering is a great way to view the photos you've taken on a bigger screen so you can make adjustments right away. Instead of having to take the memory card out of the camera, put it into your computer, then import the photos to see how they came out. If you don't know what tethering is, it's a way to connect your camera to a computer, phone, or tablet, and it lets you view the images on your computer monitors seconds after you capture them. You can even set it up to organize your photos into specific folders as you shoot, so you don't have to do it after you finish, saving you time. It's also very useful when you take photos for a client and they can see how the photos look during the shoot in real time. If you have a Sony a7 IV camera and try to connect it to Lightroom, you may have noticed that Lightroom doesn't recognize the camera. It's because Lightroom doesn't have the tethering code for Sony cameras, like it does for Canon and Nikon cameras. But there is a way, actually two ways to tether your Sony a7 IV and any other Sony cameras to your computer. In this video, I'll show you both ways to do it. So let's get into it. I'm Desiree and on this channel I do photo and video tutorials as well as gear and tech reviews. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Tethering works best when you're shooting indoors, but it can also be done if you're shooting outside as long as you have a portable power source and a place to set up your computer. When I did food photography, I would always tether my camera to my computer because the space I had to shoot in was very tight and sometimes there was no room for me to stand behind the camera. I could trigger the shutter button directly from the computer, which was set up a few feet away. It also saved me time by having my photos go directly to my computer, which I could start editing them right after taking the last shot. First, I'm going to go over how to set it up through a wired connection. You'll need some accessories before you can set up the camera for tethering. First is the USB cable that comes with the Alpha 7 IV. This cable isn't the longest in length, especially if you're setting up your camera away from your computer or up high for an overhead shot. You'll need either a long USB extension cable like this that's several feet long to plug the USB cable for the camera into and extend it. I recommend one that's at least 15 feet or longer so it will reach the computer if it's some distance away. Since my extension cable is for a USB-A connection, I have this adapter that converts it to a USB-C connection so that I can plug it into my MacBook. You could also buy an extra long USB-C to USB-A or USB-C to USB-C cable depending if your computer has a USB-C or both USB-A and C ports from Tether Tools that's compatible with Sony cameras. Since this cable is specifically for tethering, it comes in a long size and it's orange so that you can see it amongst all the other cables in the studio and not trip over it. That cable is a little pricey, so if you want to save some money, then go with the USB extension cable and be careful not to trip over it. I've included links to both options down below. Whichever cable you decide to go with, just make sure it has a USB-C connection to plug into the Alpha 7 IV. You'll also need a portable table to hold your computer. I'm using a regular foldable table, but if you need something smaller than this or more portable, you can get something like this, which is basically a tripod with a tabletop that you could place a laptop on top of. You could also get a cable guard like this to prevent your USB cable from being yanked from your camera. You'll need a tripod for your camera only if you need a steady shot, but some photographers may go handheld if they are taking photos of someone. It just depends on the photo shoot. Lastly, you'll need some tethering software. Since Sony cameras are not compatible with Lightroom, Sony has the Imaging Edge desktop app that is made specifically for this. It's free and you can download it from Sony's website. Just Google Sony Imaging Desktop app, then choose the first link and download the one that's compatible with your computer and install it. Open the app and it will ask you to log in with your Sony account or create an account to log in. Once you're logged in, you see that you have the option to do three things. Remote tether, view raw images taken with the camera, and edit your raw photos. If this is the first time you're using this app, you'll see that there is a download button here. Click on it so it can download so you can use those three features. Then install it. 
once it's installed, you won't have to download anything else. Now, before I hit the remote button to start the tether, I'm gonna plug in the USB cable to the camera and the computer. As soon as you do that, this menu appears on the camera with a few options. Since I wanna do remote shooting, I'll select the PC remote option. Now it's connected to the computer and on the camera screen, you can see that it has the letters PC here that confirms it. Before I go back to the computer, I wanna set up some of the PC remote settings. You don't have to do this every time you connect the camera to your computer, but you should at least do it when you connect it for the first time to make sure it's set up just how you want it. Go to the camera's menu, then down to network settings. Go to transfer remote, then select PC remote function. Then go down to still image save destination. Here is where you tell the camera if you want it to save the pictures you take while tethered only on the computer, on the PC and camera, or on the camera only. I'm gonna select PC and camera because I've learned from past experience that you always wanna have a backup of your photos on the memory card in case something happens to your computer during the shoot, like it loses power or the app freezes or crashes, you'll still have the photos you took saved. Go down to PC save image size and here you can tell the camera which image size it should save on the computer. I'm gonna leave it at original then for a PC save JPEG size, I'll leave it at large. Go back to the Imaging Edge app on the computer, then click on the start button under remote. A new window will open and show any cameras it finds. It found the camera, so just double click on the name of the camera to connect. If you're running this app on a Mac like I am and run any online storage apps like Dropbox, Box, or Google Drive, you may get this message that says it's unable to connect or the camera is not connected. For some reason, if you have the online storage apps open, it can't communicate with the camera. If you get this message, close the Sony Imaging Edge app and all of the online storage apps you have open. Wait for about one minute, then relaunch the Imaging Edge app and click on Start under Remote. Double click on the camera name. Now you can see what the camera sees and you have total control of the camera and its settings over here. Here are the shooting settings so you can trigger the camera shutter button here to take a photo and you can even trigger the record button to film video. You can adjust the shutter speed and other settings without having to touch the camera. If you scroll down, there's a histogram and here under save settings, you can select where you want the photos to be saved on the computer. You could also customize the file name of the photos you take so you can name it after the shoot and select the starting number and it will automatically add the next number in succession for every photo you take. To disconnect the camera from the tether, go into the camera's menu, then to network, transfer remote, PC remote function, and turn off the PC remote. Then close out of the remote app on the computer. Now let's tether to the computer wirelessly. This is great if you don't want to be tied down by a cable. For this setup, you'll need only a computer with the Imaging Edge app installed and you can forget about the USB cable. On the camera, go to the menu, then to network, transfer remote, then select PC remote function. Then go down to PC remote connect method, then choose Wi-Fi direct. This will enable a Wi-Fi signal from the camera that your computer will connect to. Then go down to the other settings and set those up if you didn't do it before or you want to change them. Then go up to PC remote and turn it on. You get this message here to check the connection information to connect the computer to the camera and the Wi-Fi direct info. Click OK and let's go down to the Wi-Fi direct info and select it. This is the info I need to look for in my computer's Wi-Fi settings. Go to your computer's Wi-Fi setting and look for the SSID for your camera. I'll click on other networks and there it is. Select it, then enter the password that's listed on the camera to connect. If you look at the camera, you'll see that it says it's connected through the Wi-Fi. Now go into the Imaging Edge app and click on start under remote. Remember, if you're running this app on a Mac and have any online storage apps open, close all of them down before connecting to the camera to avoid getting the unable to connect message. Now you can see what the camera sees and you have total control of the camera without being tied to the computer with the cable. The wireless connection is pretty stable as I move the camera and zoom in and out. 
my camera is connected to an M1 MacBook Pro. So that's probably why it's keeping up with the connection. But I've noticed that when I had the same setup on my older MacBook Pro, it was less stable and I would lose the connection between the camera and computer more often than if I was connected with the cable. Any fast movement I made with the camera caused it to lose the connection. Depending on how powerful your computer is may determine if your connection will be stable or not. If your computer struggles to maintain the wireless connection with the camera, then I would recommend using the wired connection. To disconnect the camera connection, go to menu, then to network, transfer remote, PC remote function, and turn off the PC remote. Then close out of the remote app on your computer. So that wraps up this video. I hope this video helps you set up your Sony camera for tethering. And if it did, then hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and click on the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.